of quiz winners. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as all of us are eagerly awaiting to be guided and to be led by our Honorable Minister, may I request uh, Shrimati Nirmala Sita Raman, ma'am, the Honorable Finance and the Corporate Affairs Minister, to please address the August gathering. Namaskar. Sri Rajesh Verma, Secretary of MCA, Sanjay Kumarji, Additional Secretary and the Financial Advisor, Sri Ashok Kumarji, Postmaster General uh, of India, and all uh, heads of the regulatory bodies, institutions which impart education on uh, various corporate related uh, subjects. officials, invited guests, and the media. Today we are here following up on the inauguration which the Honorable Prime Minister did yesterday, both for the Co Ministry of Finance and also for the Corporate Affairs, which during this week will be celebrating the Azadi Kamrut Mahotsav, in other words, taking the opportunity to be able to communicate with the people of India as to how this journey of 75 years has been, what role that the ministry has played in the lives of Indian citizens for the 75 years, and also putting before ourselves what the next 25 years are going to be when India reaches the 100th year of India's independence. So actually speaking, this is a very important phase in India's free India's life, where government comes before its citizens, even as it marks 75 full years of its independence to say what these 75 years have been in governance, in being accountable, and in being responsible towards making the lives of citizens better. So, Honorable Prime Minister had started this Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav in 2021 in March, when he participated in the Salt Satyagraha once again in Dandi, and from then 75 weeks up to August 2022 will be part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. However, of course, even after August this year, till August 2023, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav will be continuing so that we are able to do so many different things recall the sacrifices made by the freedom fighters, who were they, which regions they belonged to, what kind of sacrifices they did. Does this younger generation have the same opportunity to know and appreciate them? As much as also saying what kind of challenges this country has faced from 1947 till today, and despite all those challenges, have reached where we have reached today, and where we have reached today, I'm sure all of you all will agree, subject to some conditions, that it is something about which Indian citizens can feel happy and proud about, that despite all the differences, despite all the challenges, despite all uh, future problems that we may have to overcome, we together as a country, center and states, people from all different regions, have, as a democracy with all the rights intact for individuals, have pulled along to reach where we are today, and therefore it is important for us to pause for a minute and look back and see what these achievements have given us or the challenges that they've posed us and how to take us forward in the next 25 years. Whilst I'll be part of uh, 
corporate affairs ministry and also the various departments in uh, the finance ministry. I think the corporate affairs ministry is uniquely placed in dealing with this Azadi Kamarth Mahotsav. It is uniquely placed because it's, it's a regulatory ministry. It has under it so many very critical, very important regulatory body, bodies. And as we saw in that picture which was shown about MCA and its contribution in the last 75 years in its various different avatars, it clearly shows though it's a regulatory ministry, largely, how it has impacted the lives of common Indians, be they in small business or a part of a larger business or even a small investor. How during these 75 years, catching up with what's developing, the ministry has evolved the various instruments through which it relates to the common Indian citizen. The various laws that it had to revisit and change and keep it up to date are all very clearly shown in that very crisply made film. But I would certainly say that while the rest of the departments of finance ministry also have their own complex relationship with the citizens of India, Ministry of Corporate Affairs is certainly uniquely placed while facilitating even as it is regulating. The two examples I can straight ra uh, uh, take right at, up front are the ways in which the Companies Act and also the IBC, in order to keep itself robust, time relevant and nimble, have continuously kept responding to the need of the hour, need of the day and the global best, best practices and therefore didn't fight shy of going to the parliament any number of times with amendments. And therefore, I would think the corporate affairs ministry has so much more to talk about and to relate and in fact, directly or indirectly inform the public about the ways in which this uh, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav can tell us where we are and take the feedback of where we have to go and how we have to go in order to reach 2047. I'm sure the institutes, uh, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, in Institute of Cost Accounts, Accounts of India and in Institute of Company Secretaries are very potent bridges for and through their students, through their practitioners, through their certified members to communicate this to the people of India and be able to also get the inputs from them to see how this ministry can take it forward further. For my part and for the part of the government of India, I can say whilst every decade had its own significant contribution, particularly after 2021 budget, I think the nature of the economy, whether it is thankfully to the COVID, which was a challenge, but that challenge, I'm glad to say that the ministry literally kept itself on its toes that it could come up with so many different quick-footed steps that even during the lockdown or during the pandemic, people of India could go about their normal businesses particularly those in small companies could go about their normal businesses without having to worry if compliances are going to be challenged, if compliances are not going to be kept up, purely because they're all under a lockdown. But on the contrary, what we find, and I'm sure the data is available for all of us to know and validate if we observe that contrary to the fears and suspicion India set pioneering steps forward in enabling companies to keep fulfilling the compliance norms by opening it up to be digital, allowing video conferencing, keeping on, uh, you know, technology driven answers when you really couldn't meet in person. So I must say that a, a department like Company Affairs, 
was very imaginative enough to come up with technology driven solutions and make the lives of Indians, companies, small investors and certifying bodies and small chartered accountants who were in their, who were in their own local areas doing their businesses far easier to do their compliance and regulatory uh, performances without worrying because technology was available and handy. Now, if that was the case from 2020, 21 and 21, the budget of 22, in fact, looks forward for the Amrit Kal, for the next 25 years. And in that too, I'm sure the Corporate Affairs Ministry will be able to take forward quite a few of their uh, forward-looking and out-of-box thinking steps. And I would say if uh, each of the earlier decades had its own character, the decade of 2020 upwards to 2030 or even further is so distinctly infused with digital methods. No wonder, therefore, in the budget of 2022-23, we had so many announcements, all of which are digital, whether digital currency, digital university, digital banking, and looking at ways in which we can further strengthen digital payments. Therefore, I would think this decade for the MCA, adapting to the digitized performances which is going to make our lives easier is going to be one big challenge. And I'm glad I saw the presentations this morning of the various agencies, which are largely regulatory, the Com uh, Competition Commission of India, the NFRA, the National Financial Reporting Authority. You can clearly see all of them are seized of the fact that the world is moving towards greater digitization and in that India leads by having come up with the India stack with which a lot of our functions are happening digitally. So the impact of this digitization is certainly going to look at, uh, uh, is certainly going to have an impact on the markets and if it has an impact on the markets, obviously the Competition Commission or the National Financial Reporting Authority will all have to be ahead of the curve to see where the regulations will have to fall in place, where the regulations should be soft touch, where the regulations will have to be deterrent strong enough. And therefore, I think this feature that the next 25 years will be digital and driven by digital uh, considerations because that's become now a habit, good habit, easy habit. We need to have agencies ready to be able to gauge what that is going to do to fair, accountable, and transparent practices. And therefore, I would seek, the, seek to draw the attention of all the regulatory bodies to be seized of this fact that is, this is now going to pervade all aspects of our society. We cannot be behind the curve. The regulators will have to understand at what level and with what effect you need to come in. And you have to be well advanced in understanding the situation rather than be caught unawares. This also, of course, gives the challenge of digital, uh, the, the, the black dark world, which can do things in the digital arena, which can itself be a big threat. So it's very well for the regulators. It's very well for the institutes. It's very well for those who are coming out of these institutes to benefit from the digitized era. But we also need a strong manpower, which is going to be constantly looking at ways uh, in which they can evolve the firewall mechanisms which are so required to safeguard the digital uh, enabling platforms the digital world that we have created for our convenience now. And the convenience has been tasted by every Indian citizen, in the smallest in the villages, or even the most sophisticated in institutions. Now, every institution, therefore I would think, will have to equally give attention to experts who will have to be with you 
on a constant basis understanding the challenges where they come from and strengthen and make robust your firewall mechanisms or else that which made our lives easy that which is making our lives continuously easy can itself become the biggest handicap if we are not able to prevent any unforeseen disaster that can be in the name of a hacker or a you know person who can misuse this uh, technology which is today so full of promise but it shouldn't become a deterrent now there are just two things that i like to draw the attention of uh, the on the august gathering here today during the pandemic the mca did perform as i said its role with a lot more future looking approach and also understanding that that's an opportunity for us in reducing government's presence and maximizing on governance so i think uh, with all that it didn't become a deterrent or a handicap it didn't become a deterrent or a handicap but it actually enabled people during the pandemic is proven by the statistic before me i like to share that with you during the financial year 2122 mca registered more than 1.67 lakh company incorporations and if you compare that with the earlier year 2020-21 when it was only 1.55 lakhs so if 1.67 lakh companies got incorporated during the year 21-22 it shows that the mechanism through which they are registering are one easy two also that the ground is not deterred by or challenged by or or made difficult by the pandemic equally the kind of uh, steps that which were taken uh, by the mca who were transforming the regulatory environment are worth recalling there was a revision of the definition of small companies which has reduced compliance burden to about 2 lakh companies this happened during the pandemic and i i would want, want to put it on record here for us to know that a, that a ministry like corporate affairs was actually on its toes making sure that during the lockdown companies are not put to difficulty so a definitional change also happened at that time then there was zero mca fees being collected for company in corporations up to 15 lakh rupees of authorized capital zero mca fees then they were incentivization of incorporation of one person companies the opcs incentives were provided this happened during the pandemic so if we are looking at the ways in which in 75 years the ministry of corporate affairs responded to the growing needs of the free india but the challenging period of the pandemic also kept them very related to the ground and responding to the needs of the ground so incentivizing one person companies very important and an effort which shall continue is the decriminalization of technical and procedural violations decriminalize them uh, under the companies act Uh, 2013 and also under the Li limited liability partnership act of 2008 that i think is a very important step taken particularly during the pandemic the time given time for consultation all taken on board decriminalization actually is something which the prime minister has been very keen on because his message has been trust your businesses give them that confidence that government is looking at them favorably because we want them to do their business without worry and prosper it is that which is going to help india to move forward not if you are suspecting them in every measure every step and therefore decriminalization is something which the honorable prime minister has been insisting and i'm glad during this uh, pandemic 
the time was effectively utilized by MCA to remove those uh, clauses or amend those clauses which brings in that element of criminalization. Also, I probably mentioned it earlier that during the pandemic, just so the companies can continue with the general body meetings, video conferencing was allowed for board meetings for EGMs and for AGMs. Now, if this was done, uh, equally, the NCLT, the Company Law, Law Tribunal, enabled e-filing mandatory at all its branch benches across the country under the e-court initiative. Even this was done by the NCLT. I would very quickly like to put on rec a record and also compile uh, the reforms and initiatives which have been taken by the other organizations, all of which come under the MCA, uh, whether it is the IEPF, the Investor Education Protection Fund Authority, which have uh, been very effectively shown in the film. Uh, they have uh, simplified many of those processes through rationalization of various requirements for it. Similarly, they've already said that 62,000 investor awareness programs have been held by IEPF. In a way, I would think, quietly, these have helped during the pandemic, the very significant increase in retail investor numbers in India. In fact, there are times when I've answered, even in the parliament, that if FPIs are going away and coming into the country as and when, and giving us a feeling that funds are going out of India, retail investors in India have come in a big way that they seem to act like the shock observers. If FPIs went away, FIIs went away, our markets did not really have to show the ups and downs uh, in a very uh, distinct way because the small uh, investors in the country have come in in a big way, trickling into the country. And that is one of our, I would think, in the 75th year for us to be able to say that Indian investors, the small and the big and everybody, are coming in into the market and coming in with greater awareness being given by institutions like IEPF, I'm very happy. And I would think that brings the benchmark a bit higher for IEPF itself, because the next 25 years, you have even better to perform and uh, improve your own standards. So 62,000 investor awareness programs have not gone without being noticed and without having a concrete outcome. So I'm glad for that. Uh, the Institute of Corporate Affairs plays a significant role also in supporting organizational reform and in capacity building, uh, also under the MCA. So I think the Amrit Kal, we have quite a few number of institutions under the MCA who are going to have to build a lot of information platforms and get in touch with citizens of India to say what you're up to. Uh, IACA, the Co Corporate Affairs Institute, also has uh, done a policy advisory function which has helped us to, you know, be able to uh, change the IBC, deliver on very many of these uh, uh, corporate social responsibility related matters. I can see the members of IACA seated there. Your role is very significant and you have to keep performing much, much more there. Um, I think uh, also because today the public outreach and the research and study with the stakeholders on board is one big step that the IACA has taken and I think that will definitely make a big difference. You should continue on that. Similar, similar such role and for a body which is fairly new is being performed by the Competition Commission of India. The CCI has made a, a major contribution and I'm very proud of this institution in being able to <laughs> burst cartels, not allowing cartels to be formed, making their presence felt, but not really becoming an obstruction. So bursting cartels, controlling mergers in a very soft but significant way, 
giving consumer the necessary protection, uh, making sure that the markets feel that they are being remotely but silently being controlled in the sense understanding the market and allowing it to function in a free and fair manner but without interfering in their function and also enabling new age markets, international cooperation and so on. I, I honestly think the Competition Commission of India, when of course I'm in their uh, private audience in the sense when I attend their CCI programs, I keep telling them, you've not done enough, you've not done any number of Suomoto studies, you've not picked up on certain things which are very critical for India, your presence will have to be there, felt by everybody and so on. But for a minute, let me imagine that this road doesn't exist. Nobody's here. They are actually doing a significant job in making sure India's free market is fair market and making sure in an era when mergers and acquisitions are going to happen in a very big way, mergers and acquisitions are happening in India in a big way, the CCI is remaining like a shadow, but without affecting functionalities. So I wish the CCA in the next 25 years also makes sure that a modern India, digitized India, a corporate India, an India where retail investors want that support, CCI will stand up to the challenge and meet the expectations of the Indian citizen. A recent, but I'm treading on a bit of a uh, sensitive area. Like in the Western world, they would say you're treading on a minefield, but I'm not treading on a minefield, but an institution which has yet to make a very big beginning, but has a role to play is the National Financial Reporting Authority. I think they have a big role in that they are looking at listed companies. They are looking at not so listed companies, but of a certain stature. They're also looking at firms, and they should also expect that the government will also come up with requests on certain companies on which I would want them to understand the significance as our institutions abroad. And this morning I heard the head chair of uh, NAFRA telling me, I don't know, there is also a uh, hesitation in using the word NAFRA. It's nothing to do with NAFRAT. It is <laughs> National Financial Reporting Authority, which has a very big role to play. Is uh, the, the size of the job, the audience that they are dealing with, the companies that they are looking at, and the stakeholders who they are going to have to uh, address, I'm being told by the chair is comparable exactly with their counterpart in the United States of America. But they are recent, they are in the US, fairly old body. But NFRA is again a body which has to do quite a lot of work. And I understand you have issued financial reporting quality review reports. You've also had four audit quality review reports. And uh, you're also now looking at uh, recommending amendments to various rules and regulations. I wish the body all success. You also have to catch up with a lot of work which is now before you. And I hope in the next 25 years, this body also will stand up and meet the demands and expectations of the people of India. Very quickly on the National Foundation for Corporate Governance. Uh, definitely you're trying to, uh, trying to have a lot of voluntary adoption of good corporate governance practices. I wish all the very, very best even for the corporate governance body. So for the next 25 years, not just this week, this uh, gives us an opportunity for us to be able to speak about our achievements, but more to think in terms of a futuristic, visionary, uh, for a fresh new India, which is so bubbling with the youth, 
all of whom want to be in this country but receive the best of global practices in terms of running their companies, in terms of meeting with expectations of people who give them equity fund or people who are providing debt funds. We need to have government and government's policy giving them that little hand-holding rather than being a tough regulator. So I'm in the midst of a ministry, institutions, and regulators, all of whom are strong regulators. But your profile itself will have to be of a facilitator. Your profile will also have to be those who are showing the light on the path in which this country will have to go so that the youth of India will not just be looking for jobs, but will be creating jobs and delivering on innovative ways of living our lives. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And I wish all of you all the very best for the next 25 years. Jai Hind. Thank you so very much, uh, Honorable Minister, ma'am, as our uh, leader, complimenting everyone here, all the institutions, for the good work done by them during the COVID, and also guiding